Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. My name's Heather. I'm a songbird stamper, an independent demonstrator in the UK. And I'm here today to show you some... I quite, I quite like this, some rusty colouring. Um, first of all, thank you to the magnificent um, designer, artisan design team um, member, Kim Fee, for this idea. Um, I saw how she'd coloured in the robots from this cute set and I just absolutely loved it. <clears throat> and this is new to me, so um, I'm a little bit behind the curve. This has been quite a popular stamp set. It's in the January to June mini catalogue, uh, so still available. And um, yeah, I've used a few colours which you might not think of when colouring in this kind of robot. So I wanted to pop on, show you how I did this and show you how to make quite a pretty simple masculine card, really. Um, masculine cards are quite difficult. It's one of the things I get asked for the most. Um, along with fancy folds, interestingly enough, um, by my ladies, my class attendees, my customers. Um, so I'm here to say, to show you how I made a card for my better half for all that he does around the house while I'm away in the having fun crafting. So this is the stamps that I've used. I've just stamped some of the robots here in, in grey. I've done this. and Now it depends how um, dark your um, stamp pads are either a basic grey or a smoky slate. This for me I think is smoky slate because mine really is quite dark. Excuse the light and shadows here this morning, it really is really uh, miserable outside. I was going to go out uh, to Salisbury today but it's tipping it down with rain so I've decided not to. I've decided to craft with you guys instead. So what I've got here is um, smoky slate dark. These are my alcohol markers for those that aren't aware. Stampin' Blends are alcohol markers allows you to really really blend the colour um, nicely in a way that you, you can't do with felt tip pens or, or even colouring pencils I don't think. Um, and I've got um, three colour lifters but only because I don't know which one's kind of full strength and which one's nearly running out so um, you might only have one and that's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is um, pick a robot to start with, to play with and I'm going to pick this one on the left. And I'm just going to take my dark smoky slate blend. Uh, I always use the brush tip. So on the blend you get a fat line and a thin line. This is a brush tip. And this is a bullet nib. So I'm going to use the bullet nib for this. I use it for nearly all of my colouring. And there's no kind of rhyme or reason to this. I'm just laying down some of this dark colour in kind of patches all over. I think the more random you can be with this type of colouring, the better. Okay, his head and his ears. I'm going to go up where the join is, but not, not too much, just a, a kind of touch on that one. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of the light just over and round in some areas on its own. It's all going to look horrible until it comes together. But I think that's often the way with colouring and, and art in general, really. You kind of get halfway through and you go, oh my god, I hate it. I don't like it. And actually just keep persevering. And it will come together. So now I'm going to go in with a couple of unusual colours, and this is the Light Cajun Craze. It's that real rusty colour, and I'm going to go over some of my grey areas into some of the white areas on its own. Again, this one's quite a dark colour, so you don't need to go mad with it, just a little bit. I've kind of left his hands out, which is naughty, so I'll go with those in. A bit on his feet. Beautiful colour though, isn't it? And then I'm going to go in with, this is light pumpkin pie. doesn't look anything like the colour pumpkin pie, um, the light one on the nib, but it looks much nicer when you lay it down. And I am leaving some white areas, but not many. I wanted a coloured in robot. And I'm going over the grey, like I said before, some over the grey, some in the white areas. And it depends how rusty you want it, how much grey you're going to add. I'm going to go back in with the light smoky slate in a minute, so just to fill in any gaps and make them a little bit more metallic. 
learning is pretty much all rust. I just think this blends it. The first stage of the blending and you'll see what happens next. Magic. I am um, a couple of times a year, excuse me, <clears throat> a couple of times a year I run an alcohol marker course. I didn't do it at the beginning of the year uh, this year because I had a bit of a transition. Um, but uh, I'll be running one later in the year to colour with your alcohol markers. So if you fancy joining us, fancy learning more, keep your eyes open for more details. So that's kind of the basic of my robot. And then what I need to do is grab my colour lifter. And this is where the magic comes in. I want one that's kind of um, quite juicy. I so say I have one that's dry and one that's juicy for different reasons. This time I'm using the bullet nib. And I'm just going to run that all over. Now the, the tip with the colour lifter for this and for a lot of things it takes time to activate so you won't see it making a change to begin with but don't kind of keep scrubbing in that area just lay it on and then wait a couple of minutes for it to do its thing you can always go back in and do more if you don't like what it's done How's that coming on? Isn't that cool? I love that. So I'm just going to go in and do a little bit more in a couple of areas, not all over, just a couple of areas where I think maybe it's a little bit dark or I want it a little bit lighter. I want those colours to merge. The colour lifter is essentially just alcohol solution in the pen. So it's it's... It's the same kind of solution in here, but not dyed, not pigmented, so no colour. Ah, uh, my sincerest apologies. Um, so that's how my little robot ended up. Cute, isn't he? And I'll show you that all again, so don't worry. Got that kind of cut out on me there, sorry about that. So again, just going in with the dark smoky slate. I love this one, he's holding a cute little robot flower uh, made of a, a nut, or a cog rather. Going in with my dark smoky slate. I always seem to forget the neck on that first one. It's really hard making man cards. I do find when I first started crafting, my um, which actually wasn't all that long ago, only five years, five six years ago. Um, my family, um, my dad was really the only kind of person that I gave cards to, my probably my husband, but I don't think he really liked them. Uh, anyway, um, my dad always used to get flowers and butterflies, because that's what I liked making. But um, I do try. Now I've got access to kind of a few more masculine themed stamp sets and papers and things. I do try to make masculine cards, but I still really just love a flower and a butterfly. So it's hard for me as well to make them but this is a cute set I love colouring in so this is a good one for all those tricky men in your life especially if they're not kind of into cars and things it can be quite hard right so that's our kind of dark and light smoky slate we can always go back in with that light one later so don't worry too much We'll come in here with the light Cajun craze. Just going to go over some of these areas. I do love, I love this look. This is the light pumpkin pie. Just the lighter colours even help blend because they, um, they've all got, all the markers have got the alcohol solution in and it's that that causes the reaction between the inks that you've laid down and gives us that nice kind of blended look. So even before you've worked it with the colour lifter, you're starting to get that effect. <clears throat> now I'm just going to go back in with the light smoky slate. 
Oh no, that's a dark. The light one. Dark's just going to be too much. Fill in those gaps, work over some of that colour. That's it, I think I'm happy. A little bit of light pumpkin pie in there. And then I'm going to go, <clears throat> excuse me, straight from the colour lifter. Again, it takes time to work, so just swipe it over. If yours isn't as juicy as mine, mine's quite a new one, this one. If yours isn't, then you might need to go over it a couple of times, spend a bit longer on it. This one's got quite a lot of the kind of ink in it, the solution, so it can saturate quite nicely. And then leave that one. I'm just going to go back because I only did look. once over with this one. So I'm just going to go over in a couple of spots. There we go. I think I'm happy. What do you reckon? Now we can turn those into a card. So sadly there are no dies. So I am going to fussy cut these quickly. Right, there we have our three robots. So we can get to making this card. All I've done is started with a base of basic white, thick basic white cardstock that measures 14 and a half by 10 and a half. And I've, uh, sorry, 14 and a half by 21, scored in half at 10 and a half. That will create our card base. Give that a good fold and burnish. Then I've got a basic white layer, 10 by 14. I've got a strip of design series paper, which is 10 by about 3 centimetres, there or thereabouts. This is from the Simply Elegant um, range. It's got foils, gold and silver foils and grey in there, so I kind of thought it suited what I was trying to make. And this die is gorgeous. This die is from the Hippo and Friends die set. I'll show you them. They are on offer at the moment, down to £26.40 and pence in the UK, down from £33. And I use these quite a lot for um, sentiment uh, borders. So they go with the stamp set where you've got a little hippo, a rhino, a butterfly and a you. But actually the main thing in the dies is these shapes, these layering shapes. Can you see? That one's come from in there. So um, if you want some fab shape dies and you're struggling for those kind of thing, Grab those um, it's Hippo and Friends dies on offer at the moment, down to £26.40. Last chance, so as soon as they are gone, they are gone, and they're retiring at the um, end of the catalogue launch, so I think 2nd of May. They'll be gone forever, which is sad, um, but you can get those. I'll pop all the links down below in the description anyway. So I've cut one of those out, and I wanted to make it stand out, make it pop a little bit against this background. This white background so what I've done and it's a technique I haven't really used for a while um, but I've got my sponge daubers out now this is one that's actually been used for kind of a brownie cajuny craze color um, so that kind of brownie orange color but I want to pick up gray with it and that's going to give me that kind of rusty look that mix between gray and brown which kind of fits in well with the coloring that we've just done If I just used a grey or just used a brown, I wouldn't get that kind of two-tone effect that I'm getting here. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks cool. And then I've created a background on this piece of white here just by flicking. And you can go light or dark, entirely up to you. I normally start with the light and see what it looks like. So I've got my light smoky slate. I've taken this brush end and I'm just going to flick. So I'm laying it on the pen lid and I'm just pulling it off the pen lid. So I'm going to go dark just because that's not giving me the 
great depth of colour. And I'm kind of going in a swathe from top left to bottom right hand corner. It doesn't really matter if you go over at all, it's absolutely fine. As much or as little as you want to. And then on goes our designer series paper. Just have a look <clears throat> and see where you want your die shape to be. And that will kind of determine how far up your piece of paper will go. So I'm going to go for about there. So I'm going to stick this on. With some multi-purpose liquid glue. I use my grid paper underneath <clears throat> just to make sure that I'm um, lined up and straight. Excuse me, I've got a really croaky voice today for some reason. Just pull that down a little bit. There we go. Just because I've got a sentiment and um, some stamps to go up here, I know, I know what the finished result looks like. So there's we go. Um, and then what I'm going to do is stamp on the background. I've got these hearts that come out of this set as well. There's a couple of little background bits which is quite cool. That's in Smoky Slate too. So I'm just going to lay this on where it's going to go so that I don't stamp underneath it. And I'm just going to pop a couple of hearts. Again this is Smoky Slate. It's quite dark mine. Uh, yours might be lighter. Oh, apologies, I feel when gods are against me today. So I've stamped those hearts and what I'm going to do is just take my light Smoky Slate blend and I'm going to add a little bit of colour into those hearts. So I'll kind of make them pop off the page a little bit. I might go for a little bit of dark, just a tiny touch. As well. Because what I'm going to do then is go in with the colour lifter and just blend that colour fades right away. This is a <clears throat> great technique for colouring snowmen or clouds, anything that's kind of white but it just needs that hint of grey to help lift it off. All that's going to do is just make those hearts a little bit more prominent on the page. So that's that. I'm going to pop some dimensionals on the back of this piece here. Pop a few on. I don't want it collapsing in on itself. It's quite a lot for me. I don't normally put that many dimensionals on, but it's one of those shapes that just needs quite a few. And then line that up centrally as straight as you can. And pop that down. And then all I'm going to do is glue my little robots onto the front. So we've got one about there and one kind of hanging off that right hand side. So cute aren't they? I haven't put any glue on here just because it overhangs the edge here and I don't want it to risk catching and getting stuck down. I love the way their eyes, this one's eyes pointing this way and they're kind of looking at each other. So nearly there. This is ready to go straight onto my card front now while I've got the glue in my hand. And then all we need to do is add a sentiment, which I'm going to heat emboss today. 
on grey card in white because I just think that's going to tie in and make it all pop. You can go over the top with man, man cards for sure. I think they, they quite like things simple and simplistic. So there's our card. We're just going to heat emboss a quick sentiment. I've got some verse mark for my emboss buddy. And our sentiment says, greetings kind human, which I think is a really nice one. There's some good ones in this in the set. We've got um, You Make My Heart Go Beep. I'm Nuts and Bolts About You. And this one, which took me a while, is HB2U, which is Happy Birthday to You. Oh, sorry. Which is, uh, yeah, it took me a while to see what that one was. So not the grey ink, sorry. We need the Versamark ink here. I'll just run my embossed body over the top of it. I'm just going to stamp this down. Onto the basic grey ink, and then I've got some white heat embossing powder in my snazzy tub, <laughs> my takeaway carton. Just makes working with embossing powder a little bit easier, and they are cheap as chips, these, or free if you have a takeaway. So bear with me two secs just while I heat emboss this. And then I'm just going to snip this up. So I'm just going to snip up there to begin with. I tried to stamp it quite close to the bottom, but it's hard to, isn't it? So I'm just going to snip round it. my trusty paper snips. And that's going to go on just like that. I've stuck it flat so you could pop it off and dimensional it if you wanted to. But like I say I didn't want to go over the top, didn't want to add any twine or anything. I was tempted, I'm always tempted. But um just a couple of simple embellishments, gems will pop on next. Basic rhinestones. For a little bit of sparkle. I'm going to use these tiny peeny ones. Put one on there. One up here, and one there to finish her off. And there's our card. Thank you so much for sticking with me today through the technical difficulties. Um, but if you like what you see here, please do hit the subscribe button below and the bell. You'll be notified of any future videos. Um, and you can grab all this kind of product through my website. Again, I'll pop all the link below. There'll be a link to the shop um, where you can pick up some goodies and have a go at making this one for yourself. So thanks very much indeed for joining me. Take care and I will see you all again really soon. Bye for now.